Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to today's Meet the Healthcare Professional presentation sponsored by the Center for Healthcare Careers of Southeastern Wisconsin in partnership with Advocate Aurora Health, Ascension, Children's Wisconsin, and Freighted Health. My name is Devonna Williamson. I am a talent business partner at Freighted Health and I will be today's moderator. Our featured topic today is the behavioral health field presented by our friends at Advocate Aurora Health. The professional that will be sharing information with us today is Shannon Johnson. Shannon, thank you so much for coming today. Introduce yourself, please. Yeah, thank you for having me, Devana. Uh, my name is Shannon Johnson. I'm a psychotherapist at Advocate Aurora Hospital, and I've been here for about six years in the profession working with those who have mental health needs, behavioral needs, as well as struggling with addiction and recovery. Um, I'm from Milwaukee. I'm a Riverside alum, graduated in 2007. So it's a pleasure to have Riverside on the uh, on the, the uh, session today as well. Thank you so much, Shannon. Um, real quick, did you start off immediately in your current career in um, the psycho health area, or what did you do in healthcare or in the behavioral field prior to that? Yeah, right after um, undergraduate school, I actually worked in sales um, at a corporate institution for um, about a year. And then um, through some work in, in that field and working with specific clients um, in sales, I was encouraged to look at social work. And from there, I went to working at a school, um, working with parents and families and close with the social worker. And that's at that very moment, I knew that I wanted to work in social work specifically and mental health. Great, wonderful. So tell me about your work on an average day. What sort of things do you do? Sure. So at the bare, bare minimum, on an average day, I'm working with um, clients individually, as well as in the group, really unpacking and understanding what their concerns are, what their problems are. Um, is something as far as simple as having a disagreement with a family member, um, with a significant other, um, but also dealing with depression, anxiety, um, traumas, and also addiction. So it's a lot of listening and analyzing and offering support to people who are in need of support because they've reached their, their end of their ropes with life and experiences and they just don't have the words to articulate how they truly feel and they want to feel better, but they just don't know where to start. So a lot of listening, a lot of assistance, a lot of support and a lot of problem solving. So with each person one-on-one -on -one or in the larger group sessions that you may do, how much time do you spend with them? Like how much time do you get to have that patient or customer interaction? From the moment I walk in the door to the moment I leave. So average workday is about eight hours. And I would say it's safe to say that about six out of those eight hours, I'm either working with someone individually or I'm working with a group of possibly eight to 10 people, really just listening and facilitating growth and understanding what the problems are and what are some solutions that are healthier than what the- Thank you so much. I'm sorry, at the very end of what you said? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's pretty much working for solutions. So it's six hours of the day out of the eight, we're face-to-face -face engaged, whether it's me across the table or me in front of a board or us watching a clip in a circle speaking about issues. It's it, The day is pretty filled with client interaction. Great, wonderful. So what sort of training or education is needed to get to the kind of position that you're in? Okay, so for me as a, as a psychotherapist, so somebody who works with those who have behavioral, emotional, um, addiction needs and so forth, um, you need an undergraduate degree. So typically that is about four years if you do the standard route that I did. Um, after that, you have to attain a master's degree. And within your master's program, you get to decide what specific field you wanna go into. So there's school social work, there's um, human and family services, there's gerontology, which is people who are towards the end of life for older adults. Um, and then there's mental behavior health and which the path that I chosen. So two years of those studies. And then within those studies, you have to have internship. So what that means is that you go into a field that you're interested in being in like a hospital and you spend about two semesters. So probably about 36 weeks or so, if I have the math correct, um, shadowing other therapists and other doctors and learning the day-to-day -day functions of a psychotherapist. So in total, probably about six years of schooling, and then it doesn't end there, it continues. <laughs> you're, <that> now? <laughs> you're still learning, huh? <laughs> still learning, absolutely, because you have to attain certain hours in order to get your full license. So you can practice 
with just your educational background, but if you want to become more independent in your practice and see in clients individually, or even move up in leadership, there is requirement to actually be, have a full license as a psychotherapist clinically or as a substance abuse counselor that is licensed fully. Okay, That's wonderful. Exams. Okay, great. Yeah. So what would you say are the skills, traits, abilities that are truly useful in your career? For me personally, and, and work with myself and seeing other people, the people who tend to not burn out or leave the field because it has become too much, there has to be a personality of wanting to listen and not always having all the answers. One has to be willing to actually listen and develop solutions based off of the other person's experience. If somebody comes in with a, a savior attitude or they want to save the world and they know everything, they probably won't last long within the field. You have to be willing to take each and every situation um, different, as, as unique as it comes, and be willing to understand and learn about that specific culture. There has to be a curiosity to want to learn and understand somebody different. There has to be patience, because not everything is going to be easy. Um, there's a lot of resistance in therapy. Um, one has to be able to understand your own deficits, your strengths and your flaws, because those things can damage a therapeutic experience. So from my ramble, <laughs> curiosity, <laughs> understanding, and also patience. It's Wonderful. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you. So what suggestions would you give to a young person who is maybe considering a career in the behavioral health field? I would say look into pre-college programs to actually offer the opportunity to shadow and see what it's like working within a healthcare program. I say definitely that in my middle school and high school years, I was part of those um, upper bound and gear up programs to which we got to shadow and explore the healthcare field. And I would say then that actually got my mind focused on healthcare. So I was quite familiar with it, as familiar as I can get with healthcare from those pre-programs. Um, but once you go into schooling, whether associate's degree or college, um, seek out opportunities to volunteer in a healthcare um, setting. There's always opportunity to volunteer from being a there's a specific word for like a greeter of people who are coming into the hospital. Um, there's opportunities to work um, on the unit offering like volunteer services for people how to paint their nails or to color, draw art, things like that. And you get to see what the actual energy is like in a hospital. So seek out volunteering and internship opportunities and go to sessions like this and just open your mind up to the possibility of maybe healthcare can be for me as a profession. Great, wonderful. Um, Obviously, being a psychotherapist is years of study and, mm -hmm. and you know, getting to that end point. Um, are there any, beyond volunteering, are there like entry-level roles that would maybe be good experience for someone to, you know, get paid as well as? Absolutely, because you know what, now that I think about it, that's another route that I went to too as well when figuring this thing out is that um, there's always need for people to actually complete assessments or screens for people. Uh, meaning that if I come in and I'm not sure if I need therapy or I need to see a, a therapist, there's somebody that I'll meet first, what they call an intake, who actually start to ask me questions. Where are you from? Where do you live? What's your ethnicity? What are your concerns? What are your strengths or weaknesses? And just asking interview questions. So those are entry level jobs that um, typically somebody with a college degree can do. Um, I know that there's things below that if you are finishing high school that you possibly could do. Um, but entry level, um, definitely doing intakes and assessments um, is something that you can go into, um, as well as some people are techs, behavioral health techs. So they do vitals and they help out on the units and that's possibly like a two year degree and then you can get internship experience. So intake, behavioral health techs, um, I think those are pretty much the other ones I can think of besides volunteering. But if you wanna get paid, you can do those too, for sure. Great, wonderful, yeah. Volunteering is wonderful. Getting paid is also good. <laughs> uh, Both sure. have strengths are great. Absolutely. So what would you say, Shannon, you enjoy most about what you do? Um, representing people who look like me first um, and, and providing that validation that there's a way for us to be represented in the healthcare field and by us black males um, and also those who are part of the African-American diaspora, if you will, as well. Um, but as well as bringing my experience as an African-American African male 
into the healthcare profession to offer another perspective for those who are not Black or African American, because all of it is a learning experience and we can all learn from each other. And there's maybe something that I have within my experience that can help another person who is a male but white or Asian or Hispanic or Latino or Latino X and vice versa. So just diversifying experiences for growth is the main thing that I enjoy and I benefit from. And I know that the patients that I work with benefit from it as well. Okay, great, wonderful. Um, what would you say you like least about your job? Mm, like least, the commute. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> um, you know, honestly, I don't think there's anything that I, I, I don't like about being a psychotherapist or working within a hospital. Um, Cause each day I leave feeling full spiritually, emotionally, and psychologically and mentally, because I know that I'm helping someone else. All the things that I've learned in my experience as a person, as a male, as somebody who went to, through MPS, who had a great experience through MPS, then went to a predominantly white institution afterwards and went here and there, all those jewels and knowledge that I've acquired over the years, I get to share them with people here. Um, so there's I, not even the top of my head or even to make up a fake one, I can't even do it besides the snow and Wisconsin driving. There's nothing <laughs> I don't like about my job because everything is an earned experience. Even if somebody isn't as successful in their recovery journey, that's an opportunity for me to learn and figure out what to do better next time with that person if they come back, but also somebody in a similar situation. That's great. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Oh, Shannon, no couches, huh? No couch. Well, yes, that's a glamorized <laughs> presentation, but couches are used, but you don't have to. You can sit on the couch. You can sit on the chair. If you come to my sessions, we're probably going to sit on the floor with some pillows. So it, <laughs> it's, it's, it, varies. it varies. But you, you can get comfortable, a little you comfortable. You get comfortable. Absolutely. That's <laughs> one of the hallmarks. Get comfortable. Bring a blanket if you need to. All right. Great. Wonderful. Um, so um, looks like we do have a question that has come in. We are at the question and answer uh, session. Um, so if you do have questions, feel free to enter them in on the screen, the computer, um, or on your phone. Um, Anna has asked the question, when you, oh. Oh, looks like, nope, that isn't for, uh, Anna is not answering. <laughs> She's okay. not answering a question, it's forgetting. So I actually have some questions, but um, as schools or as students, if you have a question, feel free to enter it in on the screen. Um, Shannon, one of the things that you kind of touched on that I wanted to ask about was, why do you feel that behavioral health is important, particularly within our communities? Um, it's important because generationally there is a, a tendency for us to get stuck in one way of thinking and that whatever great grandma, granddad did or uncle is what grandma, grandfather, uncle has to do and so on and so forth. That it gets down to us, that could be some of you guys' big brother or, or uncle and then you're my niece and brother and sister, but we're living in a different time. There's different expectations socially, there's different pressures, um, and there's just different experiences all the way around. I mean, look at COVID. You know, how many of our, our family generations have experienced uh, a pandemic, something that's been worldwide that's infecting everybody to where people are dying um, consistently? And it requires a different way of thinking and appreciation that possibly wasn't present for our parents or our great grandparents and so forth and so on, and vice versa. So. Um, for somebody like me as a therapist to come in and to bring awareness to a more healthier way of thinking to fit today so that we don't have our own breakdown or more intense depression or anxiety, it's helpful. So it's, it's definitely helpful with all communities because we all can learn something and learn how to better exist um, amongst each other and during crisis like we're experiencing now. You uh, mentioned specifically being a professional of color um, mm -hmm. as one of the things that you really enjoy being able to bring to the table. Um, is there any misconceptions or limitations that people sometimes put on themselves in communities of color for getting help? Have you noticed that? Absolutely, absolutely. And it goes back to the previous thought is that, you know, just thinking about mental health as it started that it was seen as some kind of like spiritual, religious, you know, something you didn't do right or your parents didn't do right. So then you're cursed with this. Um, so then you are pushed to go into your religious thing to make atonement and figure it out. Um, but spirituality is a part of mental health and, and growth. 
Um, but as people of color or African American, I see that a large of the population that I identify with, which is Black, um, as well as some other communities, that it's not that we don't believe in mental health. We believe that in some part that all you have to do really is just work, occupy yourself, get your mind off of it, um, go to church, go to the mosque, go to temple, and you're fine. True in a sense, but eventually that burns out. We're not really offering a lot of solutions. We're just distracting from the actual problem. There's no resolute, there's no resolve. So when somebody like me comes in who has similar beliefs to that, but also can look at, okay, your relationship is toxic. <laughs> Maybe your parents aren't as nice. Maybe your wife is tripping a little bit. Let's develop some more ways to cope and deal with this and eliminate the issue altogether versus just ignoring it because it's going to grow bigger. So when they hear that coming from me, and as a 32 year old, and I'm talking to somebody who's 50, um, it, it is a little bit of resistance, but as we talk, and as they choose to sit on the couch or get comfortable, they begin to see the different perspective, realize, all right, you know what? I'm thinking how I used to think back when I was a teen and what my parents said, there is a different way of thinking. And vice versa for you know brothers and sisters who are in high school or college or people are talking to now, um, it's helpful to be validated with somebody who looks like you, that you have depression, you have anxiety, it is real. This is how we can deal with it versus you don't have it. And it's okay to seek help. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. We, we do have a question um, from Alicia, um, and, and the question is, does it get emotional sometimes doing the work that you do? It does, absolutely it does. Um, whether you know one cries or you just feel like your heart drops when you hear certain experiences, um, that's a reminder that you're human too, and, and this, these are real situations that are happening. Um, but in the same time, having that vulnerability with the patient, to some extent, is helpful for them to realize that somebody understands or has the same emotion that I do about my situation. And sometimes that's all people need. They just need to be validated and seeing that somebody else would share a tear with them, or offer them a, a tissue, um, or you know, give them some warmth and some closure. But it does get emotional. Um, and the unique thing, you never know. You might think one thing will get you emotional. It can be something totally different that really gets you or has gotten me that. I never thought that would actually get me in, into a place where I need to step out myself, you know, to gather myself. But it, it can be. It can be. But peers and support to help you talk about it and to understand where it's coming from from you. And then you heal, you move on. Okay, great, wonderful. So um, I know we talked a little bit about your role itself. Are there other professionals that you work with? And by that, I mean people who aren't in the uh, mental health field. Like how closely do you work with other professionals? Uh, well, okay. So the key word for the students today is interdisciplinary <laughs> is, is the word. So what that means is that there's different specialties that work together that may not be in the hospital health field, but they work with the person or patient or help us. Um, so it could be um, a, a caseworker that helps with housing. They're not in healthcare, but they can help a patient that I'm working with who is struggling with being homeless. And they're doing assessments and intakes for the patient to get them a house. Um, there can be somebody who enjoys, you know, leading groups, learning how to draw, color, paint, race cars, build things. And we reach out them, to them to help us support somebody who has lost all interest in everything and they want to explore different interests. Um, so we have those types of people. So everyone, even families, is somebody that you can work with um, within the healthcare field that's not actually a part of the healthcare system. Okay, great. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, I am not seeing any other questions that have come in. Um, if anyone has one that they want to quickly enter in, we definitely are open to, you know, taking that and uh, trying to address what the, uh, the question is. Um, but beyond that, I don't know that there are any other questions. Is there anything else that you wanted to share, Shannon, with us regarding why this is a good field to go into or? Definitely. Uh, if you're looking for something to not only get paid for, but <laughs> you are looking for a sense of satisfaction that maybe you're taking your place in society to give back and to help your fellow person around you and to be somebody in your community that is looking for change and growth. Um, healthcare is one of the, the largest entities I say that does that. Whether you're a therapist like myself who works on problems mentally and, and behaviorally, 
or if you're looking for somebody who needs to advocate as they go through surgery and looking for their best options. Um, having somebody who looks like you talk about those things and having your own experience to share within reason can be helpful. And that succeeds any type of financial gain I get from doing this job because I'm representing my community and I'm making a difference and I'm fostering that change that we talk about that we need. So if you're looking for change, if you want to be in the driver's seat for change, if you want to actually give back, if you want to actually not have a boring job <laughs> where you're constantly being put on the field to learn and think on your feet and research, then healthcare, um, psychotherapy, psychiatry, psychology, hospital social workers, pedi all those things are um, one of those professions that can do that for you. Okay, great, wonderful. Thank you so much, Shannon. Um, really, we appreciate you taking time to talk to the group and give us some good um, test questions for Kahoot. <laughs> um, okay. um, and we really appreciate your time. And we thank all of the schools, all of the students, the uh, teachers, the representatives that are here today. If you do have any further questions regarding the event itself, um, questions maybe regarding the you know psychotherapy role or being in behavioral health, please feel free to reach out to joan.ward at employmilwaukee.org. Um, and Joan will shoot those questions out to whoever the appropriate person is to answer them. Um, but we really do appreciate everyone taking time to join us today um, to play some games and to learn um, you know, from someone who is in the field and is excited about representing the community and helping people with their mental health needs. Thank you again, everyone. We appreciate you coming today. Thank you. Thank you.